coming back from my studio. Uh, I'm gonna be working on a new project uh, this next couple of days. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to get them all done in this one go. Uh, basically what we're gonna be doing is creating a Viking axe frog. Um, so if you don't know what a Viking axe frog is, or an axe frog, or a frog, um, mind you this is only what I know about them and what I've read um, from the wonderful internet. Uh, it is a leather and metal, or just leather, um, construction that connects to your belt or your hip, you know, on your waist. It allows a axe to be slid into it using a ring, proprietary, the, the ring method. Now it can be done in a ring in, with a leather or a ring with this. Uh, this is a brass ring. This is a two inch. Um, you can get these even bigger. Um, it's a fairly straightforward, you see them a lot online, a lot of Renaissance vessels have them. Um, I like taking mine a little further and put in a little more, you know, I, I just like glitzing them up. So what I've done is I have created a couple other pieces. I've created a template. Uh, I'm gonna show you the template. So there's the template. And I just went into, I think, Microsoft Paint or something like that, and I just drew this up and then I cut it out and I, you know, use contact cement to, or sorry, spray adhesive to put it on uh, the, the actual photocopy onto a cardboard, uh, you know, paper, construction paper. And then I went and I cut out a leather blank and a leather blank. I have <coughs> pre-cut leather strap ready to go. And um, that'll make things pretty easy. On the template, if you can see, there's holes. Those holes are pretty much so that you know exactly where everything goes on the template and it, it just makes it a lot easier. Um, I name these and I put them in a file so if I ever need one. This one's pretty fancy um, and it will have loops going around for the belt and pretty good. I also created two more, I, uh, I created two um, 3D printed stamps and I embossed uh, two pieces of leather, one with a Norse tree of life, and the other one is the Icelandic compass or uh, Norse vegivisor, which is a compass. So I'm going to take these and these are going to be finished differently and they're going to be applied to the uh, surface as well as all the leather, you know, all the cutting and, and tooling. And then, uh, once all these components are put together and stitched on, the straps and everything for every part, then I'm going to put a leather backing on it, then I will drive the holes for the eyelets and have a completely finished piece that will all be stitched together and then sealed and completed. And then I'll show the finished unit. Um, so we're just gonna go through each stage of this so that you can see it all and see how I do it. Uh, mind you, I am not a professional. I am simply a very enthusiastic maker. Uh, I'll do my best to try to explain that. And then if there's anything that comes up, you know, questions or comments in the, you know, in the, in the, in the questions and comments area, ask. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, again, thanks for being here and here we go. onto the lower section. Of course, I'm not gonna hand stitch this one because I can stitch it on my sewing machine and get it done in 30 seconds compared to an hour of stitching, and who wants to do that?
Okay, so this is the uh, Phoebe green, and then that's the EcoFlow water base. This is a alcohol base, this is a water base. Um, the water base is just a little lighter, works. I'm gonna be going over this with uh, inside the tree, and I'm actually gonna darken this up with another dye uh, as soon as this dries, because it's a little too damp right now. Um, I've made the border for this, and then we're gonna be using a lacing or a, uh, a stitch groover to cut a groove around that, and that's also gonna remove some of that, and it's just, you know, we're just gonna make layers, is all we're trying to do, just more and more layers. This is mahogany. Um, it's much darker. Uh, I really like using it, uh, especially for like border work. Uh, it just, it just looks great. the piece so far and we put the tree of life on it and we can put the ring here shortly I'm going to be put lacing it together Water-based product called Super Sheen by EcoFlow. This can be used as a resist as well as it just helps seal the color. Today is we're gonna do light brown. It's a uh, waxed polyester. Uh, thread. We're going to do a saddle stitch on it. stitch work. Now we're going to do the other side. All right, 
There's it all stitched up. There's the back. There's the front. Now the new piece of leather that I have right here, this is going to be the back leather. So a lot of people would just stop right here. Um, they would clean this up and this is how it'd be sold. They may dye the backside. Um, I, I want to take the next step. I like, I like upping it. Uh, the next one we're going to do is going to be, uh, the back is actually going to be done in a, tech, a fake um, alligator texture that I have a big chunk of. I got at uh, like a ridiculous price on it, so I couldn't pass it up. Um, so that'll look kind of cool on the back. Um, I could eventually even make one in the front out of the same, uh, or make it as an inlay piece, which I might do too. That's, a, that's another good idea. Um, do an inlay piece and put some rivets in there and stitch it in. I think that would probably make it a really cool piece. Um, and then do the overstitch. Uh, so the tree stitched up real well. I don't know how well you can see the stitching, but I, I, seem, I, I like it. it, it turned out nice. Uh, so on this piece, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to put a contact cement on both sides. Um, and once that's tacky, then we're going to flip it over. We're going to attach it. Then we're gonna go around the border and we're gonna cut the border. But we're also gonna use one of our my other mallets and we're gonna make sure that we securely attach it. Uh, what I use is barge cement. Um, really good stuff, really stinky, but it works. Finish the stitching. And now we're going to do some burnishing and then we're going to uh, put the two holes in up here and uh, put the uh, straps on and uh, call it a night. Pretty awesome. This is another Eco for all, Eco Flow product, and it's a highlight. It's kind of a thick consistency, and you just work it in. This is where I use it on the stitches. definitely don't like that alignment and I definitely want it more centered so we're gonna go here but we're gonna measure up so I like over there so we're gonna do an inch 
one inch. Yeah, inch and a quarter. It's the nice thing about having the grid work like I do here. I just kind of messed around with this in creating this design. And uh, I think in the future that's how I'm gonna go. fourth punch take our piece line it up take our pencil outline now we've got our marks Got our holes popped through. go. There's the back side. The front side. All right, we're all done. Uh, thanks for following along with this uh, little project of mine here. Uh, this is going to be the first one. Uh, this is not going to be the last. So uh, next one I'm going to do is going to be the Vegivisor one. So um, hopefully it'll look even as cool as this one. You can actually see the the cool detail, edge detail. I think it turned out really good. So hopefully my sister will like it. There's the back side. Uh, hopefully my sister will like it and uh, and I won't have to make another one. If she doesn't like it, then this was probably going to be put up for sale. Um, oh, let me grab an axe real quick and show you what that looks like. Hope that helps. So you can see how the axe, how the aches. I don't know if you, how the lighting's here. I don't think we're getting the right direction on it. There we go. So you can see, there it is. So thanks again, have a good night.